Hello, everybody. This is Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Reese. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Fine. Hi, Dave. Hey. You know, I have two emails to be read. Okay. Reese. During Not public comment. He said he would be here. Okay, you're breaking up. Um, okay, thank you. Uh huh. That's better. So, what did you say about the emails? I have two of them. Okay. Just whenever they're ready for public comment. And uh, Bruce Robinson going to be at the meeting tonight. I um, sent him an email and he replied that he would be here at the meeting. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Bruce. Okay. <clears throat> But Jane, can you see me? Can you hear me? This is Barbara. Barbara, I can hear you. I can't see you now, but I saw you before. I know. I'm waiting for you to let me in. It won't let me start video. It says the host has disabled it. Okay. I'm not the host this time. It's Rono and uh, Bridget. Rono's in charge this time. So, um, We'll okay. wait for him. I just a little. There you are. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Barbara. Are. Thank you, Rono, for letting me in. <laughs> okay. Hi, Reese. Your last meeting. Can you believe it? I know. I know. God, it's unbelievable. Time has passed. <sighs> Hi, Tom. Hello. I actually have a camera now. Oh, yes, I can see you. you. All right. This is exciting, Tom. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of a revolutionary. You are. <laughs> oh, my God. And you're still wearing a shirt and tie. Be still, be still my heart. Be still my heart. Look at <laughs> 
He's Tom, dressed appropriately. Tom, have you got have have you got a, a camera? I can't believe it. Wow. It's exciting. You know, Vicky, <laughs> I appreciate your sarcasm. I appreciate that you're 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 wading into the brave new world of IT and getting a camera on your on your computer. Oh my goodness. Actually, this is a, a, a an old thing that I got so it would function. Well, we're impressed. We can see you. Yeah. I'm we're using, we're using the whole thing is good, Tom. I see Bruce here. Bruce, are you one of our new members? No, I'm not. Um, I'm I'm here to be honored in some way. <laughs> oh, well, that's better because because if you were actually a member, we put you to work, and this way you could just be honored for for whatever it is. Okay, that's right. You're on the yeah. agenda. You're on the agenda at the very beginning. Very good. So yeah, how's much my better mark? not to be a commissioner. <laughs> So how's my microphone working? Sounds good, Randall. Yep. All right. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul, how are you? Life is as good as uh, it could be considering, you know? Good. I guess I'm, uh, hey, Bruce, there you are. Hi. Hello there. You. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. I haven't seen you in a while either. <laughs> yeah, well, here we go. You don't see me now because I just moved my. There you go. Oh, uh, there. Yeah, yeah. Things are things are interesting. Yeah. It's interesting running a nonprofit in these days. You know. Exactly. Yeah, but it's okay. Bruce, I mean, yeah. Paul, have you had any more little baby deer in your backyard? <laughs> no, they. Uh, I'm I uh, just real quick. I had a, a newborn fawn uh, fall in my uh, koi pond. And oh it no! Was like a day old, and it was treading water, and I had to reach down and uh, pull it out by its belly. And the mom was standing right there, like a few feet away, and and looked grateful, which was great, because I heard <laughs> I heard uh, for a lot of people that they can attack you if you go near their fawns, but I think she realized. It needed to be saved so i got some good photographs of it and uh and it was quite a quite a moment nature is amazing it's amazing how it's coming out since we're in isolation uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but they haven't been back since so. must be six o'clock i hear that yes. um, like <laughs> westminster abbey or something that, that that's the have clock. A couple of minutes. That was that's big the clock in my living room. Ah. Oh, was it? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> a serious clock. Well, let me introduce the new family member. This is Christoph. Oh. oh. <laughs> Very cute. Oh. oh. And he's come to the meeting with me. Yeah. Asleep. <laughs> is he is he going to be nice or is he going to be catty? <laughs> Just as long as he's quiet. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's quiet. Where did you get him, Randall? Is he a rescue? Yeah. Um, the Sonoma Humane Society that's just outside Sebastopol yeah. on Highway 12. He's an, old, he's an old kitty. He's like 13. So. Well, good for you guys. Fortunate cat. So we have Joel yet to come. Um, Karen. Deborah. Andy and Deborah. So there are four there more Andy. people. Wait a couple more minutes just to see if we can get them in. No, there is Andy. Okay. And there's Karen. So we need Deborah and um, Triple.
I wonder, is Joel having a problem getting in maybe? I, I haven't gotten any email from him. Usually if people have okay. trouble, email me, so. <clears throat> you know, what's confusing is that on the agenda, the link is the public link and the, the Zoom link for to get in like this is, you know, in that separate memo, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How are you, Vince? I'm doing well. Really, really busy right now trying to figure out this whole back to school plan. Oh, oh. Yeah, I've been in, I've been in meetings since about what, noon or a little bit before noon today with the, the district and the teachers unions and all my colleagues. And, whew, it's, uh, yeah. Today, yeah. Okay, there's Deborah. Hi there. Is Joel. Give him another minute or so, and then we'll go ahead and start. And maybe somebody can track him down. Did Joel get the official laying on of hands from Ranu? Oh, yeah, probably. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to close my door here. Boy, a minute can seem like a long time. Well, should we go ahead and start? At least we can take roll. So, okay. Uh, David K. I'm calling the meeting to order, excuse me, officially at 6 2 um, I'm going to call the roll call. So, David Cahill. Here. here. Okay, Vince Dottery. Right here. Deborah Doyle. Here. Andy Elkind. Here. Paul Heavenridge. Here. Tim Hauser. Here. Barbara McKenzie. Here. Randall Neff. Here. Karen Schneider. Here. Joel, have you made it yet? Not yet. Okay, and myself, I'm here. Okay, everybody's made it except one, Joel, and maybe somebody who's doing the IT could check and see if he's coming or if he's gotten lost in the- I just sent him. Okay. I sent him an email. Okay. Um, I guess then we will start with uh, one of our favorite people, Bruce Robinson, who has, my gosh, he's been around, I think my first, one of my first big meetings that I attended, he was there giving a presentation on Measure M, and then he became the president of the Friends and, and Foundation President's Council. Um, He's just done so much out in Guerneville, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I don't know of anybody that hasn't expressed appreciation for all he has done at some point or another during the six years that I've been on. And I, he's been on doing this a lot, lot, lot longer than that. So we are have developed a resolution to thank and acknowledge Bruce Robinson for his accomplishments and contributions to the Sonoma County Library. Is there anything anybody else would like to say in thanking Bruce before I read the resolution? Yeah, well, I just want to say I was uh, on the Guerneville uh, lab as a commissioner with, with Bruce and uh, he, uh, he always brought a lot to the meetings. He was always uh, you know, uh, prepared to answer the questions, which was not always true for everybody. And, and uh, just an all around nice guy. So Bruce, good to see you. Good to this see is, you, thank you. This is Barbara, I'd like to say something about Bruce. Um, all I can see is Bruce's face on the agenda. Are we, is that how we're doing? Well, anyway, hi Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> 
don't know if you can see me or not, but um, I just I can want, see I want to thank you so much for everything. I've always enjoyed your your presence and your just you're such a kind, nice, smart, great guy. And the, we go back to the Measure M uh, campaign, and you were the chair, and it was like. Here, you take it. And you know, we had no resources. We had hardly any time. Everybody was new. The commission was new. The you know, Brett, the director was new. The CFO was new. We had like three crazy months to try to get that thing passed. And I, it was a kind of a bonding experience from um, you know, going through the pressure cooker. And then you came back and you were on the Measure Y committee. And of course, we've crossed paths many places, and including the the Foundation, Prince and Foundation President's Council, which you agreed to take on. And I will never forget your description of your um, friends' uh, parties before <laughs> before you have the book sales out in Guerneville and you called them medieval work <laughs> parties <laughs> and how you would all sit out there and clean all the books and everything. But you've just done so much from bake sales yeah, to I'm heading in. I Thanks, Ray. And I just uh, will miss you. Mm -hmm because uh, you've just kind of been everywhere and uh, you're just a, a wonderful guy and I it's been wonderful to know you and I hope we continue to see you and uh, see you involved in some way or other as we move forward. But thank you for all you've done. Thank you. Okay, hello, Joel. Hello. Glad you made it. <laughs> okay, so the resolution to thank and acknowledge Bruce Horace Robinson for his accomplishments and contributions to the Sonoma County Library. Whereas Bruce Horace Robinson has been an active and stalwart supporter of the Sonoma County Library System, especially the Guerneville Regional Library for many years. And whereas Bruce joined the River Friends of the Library in 2006 and served as his president for 10 years from 2010 to 2020. And whereas Bruce and others recognize the value for friends groups and the Public Library Foundation to share and support each other, and he founded and organized the Friends and Foundations President's Council and served as its chair. And whereas Bruce served on the Guerneville Regional Library's Library Advisory Board for 10 years, and whereas Bruce served on two sales tax measure volunteer committees, including successful Measure Y effort, and has since served on the Measure Y Oversight Committee. And whereas Bruce has always demonstrated his intention to treat others fairly and respectfully, as exemplified by an email from a Rivers Friend volunteer who wrote, thank you so much for your time, commitment, patience, sense of humor, and non-judgmental respectful treatment of each and every person. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Sonoma County Library Commission expresses its heartfelt gratitude, Bruce Horace Robinson, and honor him on this day for his contributions to the Sonoma County Library, and through that work to the people of Sonoma County. So I say we all. And we will Thanks. be adjourning in your honor, hopefully a Later. short time from now. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Bruce. Yes. Thank you. Cheers to Bruce. Thank you, Cheers. thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I wouldn't have been able to do half of that with all, without the help of all of the volunteers at the River Friends of the Library and all of the um, staff and members of the um, Sonoma County Library, which I love very, very much. And I've been supported and um, cheered on um, by everyone and all. And that is what's kept me going all of these many years. So thank you so much. You're welcome. You. And we will be honoring you at the end of this. Uh, and you will receive a copy of the resolution with my signature on it, so. Oh, well, that, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. So, um, so I'll let you go on with your meeting. Am I allowed to leave at this point? Yeah. You are. Oh, no, you have to sit through the whole grind. Sure. No, Unless yes. there are public Once comments. <laughs> Unless there are public comments. Are there any public comments? Okay. Okay, very well. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Hi, Bye -bye. Bruce. Thank you. Okay, so we will now move on to the presentation, um, Racial Equality and Initiative. Uh, Lana, Alita, Freddie, Sabine, and Suzanne. Turn it over to you.
Great. Uh, thank you so much, commissioners, for allowing <clears throat> the Sonoma County Library's racial equity team to share some of our work over the last year with you. I'm Lana Lowen, one of our public services division managers. And I'd like to introduce, uh, introduce my colleagues on the team. So we have Alita Dimas, branch manager for the Windsor Regional Library, Freddie Gonzalez, library associate for the Healdsburg Regional Library, Sabine Silak, teen librarian for the Sonoma Valley Regional Library, and Suzanne Silva, our human resources manager. The library's team is specifically focused on racial equity, which is defined for our work as racial equity is realized when race can no longer be used to predict life outcomes and outcomes for all groups are improved. We have a clear showing in Sonoma County of the work that needs to be done for our Latinx and black communities in the region during this pandemic. For the Sonoma County Library, we are an instrumental resource in every community um, as well as an instrumental resource for our own employees to enjoy a high quality of life while living in Sonoma County. We are always striving to provide better service to all and looking at our services, policies, and procedures, specifically through a racial equity lens, will allow us to reach this goal of excellent service. We selected the graphic on the slide to illustrate that all too often organizations focus on EDI as one concrete goal, but each goal of diversity inclusion and equity are extremely challenging to consistently achieve. The library is striving for increased diversity and inclusion in our programs and services, but racial equity calls for a more critical analysis internally and externally um, of the work that we do, as well as the relationships we have with our partners in this work. How will we truly serve community and one another if we do not analyze and change practices that could be harmful to our communities of color? How do we as an organization across this entire county demonstrate both in a statement and in practice that we are committed to success for, for all communities? Our team is very happy to share some ideas with the commission tonight. Some members of our library commission might remember um, Director Hildreth announcing in 2019 that we had joined the County of Sonoma's, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Government Alliance on Race and Equity Cohort. I joined that team in 2019, and I'm still involved in that group, uh, which has transitioned to SoCo Real, which stands for Sonoma County Racial Equity Alliance Leadership. From the slide, you can see many of the other departments that are represented in the cohort. And we also now have a representative from County Council, Alegria de la Cruz, who's very active in OCN, and Cristel Creadejera from the County Administrator's Office. As of last Tuesday, this group assisted the Board of Supervisors in establishing a new Office of Equity for Sonoma County. We assisted with the structure and funding for the department, as well as the job description for the equity officer. This group has also been involved with supporting the Board of Supervisors work on the strategic plan, as well as, as one of their pillars is um, racial equity and social justice. The library continues to be a part of this team uh, due to our tremendous reach with communities across the county, as well as facilitating communication and partnerships with other county departments to better serve all communities. For this slide, the California Library community was also offered an opportunity to engage in racial equity work in 2019. And we applied for a Library Services and Technology Act grant, which we were awarded last summer. Uh, the goal being to raise awareness of the need for racial equity work in our own organizations, as well as the communities we serve. Our group has completed a year of racial equity training with other library systems from Northern and Southern California while working on our own goals for our own library system, which you'll see tonight. <clears throat> our team would also like to thank the group of staff who recently submitted a call to action to Library Administration and the Library Commission for the Sonoma County Library to become an anti-racist leader in addressing systemic racism. This is the work that the racial equity team has been engaged in and we are ready to move to the next steps in our work, which is to engage the Library Commission, administration, and our staff in moving towards this goal. Inequity in action. The photo to the left is that of the Redwood Minstrels in Petaluma. This photo was taken in 1932, not even 100 years ago. We still have disparities in our county. Our demographics in Sonoma County are 64% white, 25% Latinx, 4% Asian, 3% mixed, 1% Black, and 1% other. 
these are some inequities in Sonoma County. High school graduation rates for the Latinx population is 79%. Meanwhile, high school graduation rates for the white population is 84%. This disparity is similarly seen in college graduation rates, where 23% of the white population graduates from college. Meanwhile, only 10% of the Latinx community graduates from college. The percentage of the Latinx population that owns homes are 39%. Meanwhile, the percentage of homeowners in the white population is 66%. The median household income for the Latinx population is 55,000. Meanwhile, the median household income for the white population is 71,000, 16,000 more a year. Disparities are greatly seen in the recent COVID-19 cases. 75% of all cases were from the Latinx population. Meanwhile, only 15% of cases were from the white population. The Press Democrat states that the virus thrives among those without health insurance, child care, employer paid sick leave, and language barriers. Finally, we can also see disparities within our own library system, with 10% of our staff being Latinx and 73% of the staff being white. As we can see from the statistics Freddie shared, racial inequity continues to be a reality in Sonoma County today, with different, different, differing life outcomes based on race. As part of this grant and through our training, we have reflected on the library's role in addressing these inequities. Our reflections helped us in developing this racial equity case statement, which addresses the question, why should we as a library engage in the work of racial equity? The Sonoma County Library's mission is to bring information, ideas, and people together to build a stronger community. The library recognizes that racial inequity in our communities has resulted in a lack of access and service for people of color. We commit to providing racially equitable service by eliminating practices and procedures that contribute to systemic racism and exclude communities of color. For this phase of our racial equity project, we were asked to develop a vision that would answer the question, what would an equitable society look like? This racial equity vision statement will guide our work going forward. All people in Sonoma County are heard, seen, and represented by their local library system. Community members believe that the library's core purpose is to support them in achieving their hopes and dreams. Sonoma County Library is accessible to all, free from prejudice, and a collective gift that empowers all communities. The final phase, which results in the most work, is how will people's lives be better off because we do this work? So this is our racial equity results statement. Basically, when Sonoma County Library provides racially equitable service throughout our organization, the following will happen. All community voices are heard and represented at the library. Library staff reflects the diversity present in Sonoma County. The library is a safe and welcoming environment for all. Stakeholders and partners can rely on the library to advance racial equity work inside and outside of our organization. Communities of color are invested in library services and services are relevant to their needs. Racial disparity, disparities in educational outcomes and barriers to career attainment are reduced and the quality of life improves for all Sonoma County residents. So we did some great work throughout this past year in developing a case statement, a vision statement and results statements but that's where the, the work just begins. Um, we really bring the work back now to our group and then eventually through the library staff itself by um, working on standards of behavior and training for all staff and even internally through our security um, uh, guards and people that are within the library. We need to also work on developing um, equitable programming 
Um, we need to develop this through our marketing programs, through translation of materials and outreach. Uh, we want to evaluate our hiring practices, job descriptions, uh, requirements for entry and onboarding and um, staff integration and inclusion. Um, assessment of our just our current policies and procedures and incorporating more staff feedback and participation in the racial equity work. We are also um, planning to do microaggression and implicit bias, implicit bias training this year. And ultimately, um, we will be develop we will be um, develop in the development, sorry, of a um, application and racial equity tool that will be used for the decision making in all levels. And what is that? Well, that's a process uh, and a set of questions to guide the development and implementation and evaluation of all policies initiatives, programs, and uh, their budgets and impacts on racial equity throughout the uh, organization. And thank you for um, your time today. And do you have any questions? This is uh, Barbara, I have a question. Hey, Barbara. Um, for, uh, first of all, thank you all for your work on this. It's very important and uh, very timely as we know. I was watching Board of Supervisors meeting the other day when they created this Office of Equity. I didn't realize that we were part of it, that we had a team involved. So I'm really happy to know about this. And um, I, I'm, uh, you know, very impressed and, and, and eager to, to move forward. Uh, Suzanne, would it be possible to get a, a written, uh, what you just said, your very last comments about some of these specifics that we're gonna do? Could we have, a, have that written up and, uh, and receive that? Yes, yes, we would be happy to provide that to you. Great, thank you, I appreciate that. Are there any other comments? Okay, well, I would like to make one. I would like to see uh, the commission somehow involved in this too. I mean, we're a part of the library and if you look at our makeup, uh, racial equity is definitely not reflected with a third of the population. I think it's around a third, quarter to a third, the population. Latinx, I mean, we need to have, we need to reflect that. So, and in some of our decision-making, we need to be part of this whole process. Um, I would like uh, your committee to think about how we could be included and not to tell you what to do, not to do anything, but to be part of it, to be a partner. So anyway, any other comments? This is Thomas Hauser. Um, this is gonna be very, very difficult because we have built in little things we think of and we're unconscious of them. And I'm, I think we have to undertake this effort and keep beating our heads against this wall because it is very, very important to everybody in our country. I would like to, oh, um, Suzanne. Sorry, I keep muting myself. Um, so that is one of the things that we, you know, in a, in a challenging fiscal um, year, um, one of the things that you know we, we may not be doing a whole lot of hiring um and so one of the things that we we were able to save in our budget is the um is the uh implicit bias and, and microaggressions um training so that is where you know one of the places where you do start in a big um you know not everything changes overnight and so training is one of the education and awareness is one of the places where where we can start and, and things don't change overnight, but you you can't not start the, the ball rolling. So, um, you know, it's been a year uh, and, and I think we have support and support is the number one um, place where it, it begins. So having OMT support and organizational support is, is um, critical. So I just wanted to thank you all for that. To piggyback on that comment, um, I was curious. Lana, I saw you, I think you had your hand up. I don't want to jump in front of you there if you had something you wanted to add. Oh, I'll go after you. Um, you were talking about the microaggression 
and the implicit bias training. Can you describe a little bit about what that training might look like or, or how that's being implemented? I'm gonna let Lana uh, take a look on that. Sure, I'll answer two questions. So we've, I mean, um, we did a preliminary search for firms to kind of do this training with staff um, and it's to help relationships in the workplace. Like as Commissioner Hauser said, there are things um, that people say or do sometimes um, that they have no idea is having a harmful effect on other people. So microaggressions and implicit bias kind of take that apart and require you to have a deeper analysis of who you are and what you've learned in your life and how that affects other people. So it's a very, um, I think, sensitive and challenging training in that way, uh, but it's also an educational piece for staff. Um, so um, you know, it's been on our list to enact for a really long time, but again, you have to have the right trainer trainers to do this who have uh, done a lot of this work. So we're, we're hopeful to get that started again this year. Um, and the comments I wanted to make in response to Commissioner Hauser and Commissioner Foxen's um, comments is we're very happy for the support. And um, as you can see, we've been doing this work for a long time and it takes time, um, but we appreciate the um, commitment and the efforts to that. And even in a lean budget year, we have the chance to revise policies, uh, to look at things as a staff and look at them through the racial equity lens and do that work to start that change. This is Barbara, Barbara. just a quick, quick comment. Um, it wasn't more than about a year ago, I believe. Uh, I know Randall, uh, Commissioner Neff and I, and I don't remember who else uh, took uh, racial equity and uh, training at, at the headquarters to fill some sort of requirement. I can't remember, do you remember Randall? Anyway, it included the microaggression and you know, other you know, pertinent topics and it was pretty good. So um, in terms of commission training, I think it's good for us also. Thank you. I got my hand up somewhere. Um, I was wondering, uh, since we're going to be redoing the strategic planning, it seems to me that this is a great way, not you know, perhaps on the strategic planning day, but but to make sure that we factor it into the planning that we do at the staff level and also at the commission level. Um, so we can just make sure that it's, it's just part of the fabric as we move forward. I think one, one piece our, our group would like the commission to think about is the statements that we've created. So we've created a, you know, what happens when we're doing this work? What do we see as a result of this work and how we'll get there? So can any of those pieces land a more permanent place with more input um, as part of our strategic plan or um, a revised mission or vision for the library system. Anybody else? One thing I just wanted to add to <clears throat> is just something that's been swirling in my head was I did a really good training at the Museum of Tolerance down in uh, Southern California. Oh, yeah. Um, I know they have some really good resources. I've also done implicit bias training through Yale University. They have a really interesting website. I'm sure you guys probably have looked at it and seen it. Um, that helps kind of diagnose some of your implicit biases and things like that. Um, has there been any discussion on, maybe this isn't in the right arena, but any discussion about how to determine that somebody might not be a racist, but they might hold racist ideas? So you might not be consider yourself a racist and you're not going to, you know, say I'm a racist and things like that. But some of the positions you hold or some of the policies you support are as an end result racist at, at, in the outcome. I'm, I'm not sure we've gotten into that uh, organizationally uh, here, but we had a great deal of dialogue when we were at our um, our uh, grant uh, training with the groups of, of staff that were um, uh, on the grant with the training that we've been going through and still have a couple of more sessions to, to go through. But it's, it's uh, you know, when you start to have sessions, they, they, do, um, they do get really involved. That's why you really wanna have a great uh, facilitator and um, people that are helping you uh, engage in this work. So it, it can be very uh, lively to, to say it um, lightly, so. Um, and I think the library is an, you know, educational institution. We've been doing this work uh, for our community in terms of um, participatory book clubs where you're reading a book that kind of exposes you to think about things in a different way than you ever did. 
Um, so we're you know, happy to engage with that in our community and also um, with one another as part of this process. Just, uh, this is Barbara, could I just, uh, I can't tell what's going on here, so. It's I okay, have... Barbara, I'll tell you to stop <laughs> it. Okay. It's too confusing. I, I just wanted to say that uh, one of the things, as Lana was pointing out, of the many things that the library has done um, is that we, uh, to remember just last winter, that we had a Dr. Ibram Kendi here at the Roanoke Park Library as part of our Distinguished Speaker Series. And he, uh, you know, he's like, the person out there that, uh, you know, I, I think no, number one and number two best selling books um, on this topic. And uh, we, uh, uh, kudos to our programming folks who, who arranged that, but it was a huge success. There were about 400 people out on a rainy night after the library was closed listening to him. So, anyway, we were, um, I, I really applaud the staff and all the work that they've done, including that, because it was rarely uh, memorable. I, I won't forget that. It was, um, a really uh, moving uh, presentation. Thank you. Yeah, um, in regards to what Vince said about the Museum of Tolerance down south, if anybody ever has the opportunity to go to a training down there, that is tremendous. I've been down numerous times since I was on the Human Rights Commission and uh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> They have a very powerful um, mm -hmm. simulation of what the Holocaust looked like in the, oh, the corridor. Oh, my hair stand on end. It was emotional going through when you went yeah. through. You couldn't help yeah. but feel like you were, it was really powerful. So if you ever, and if you ever just have the chance and you're down there just to go to the museum, even if you're not there for a training, go to that museum because it is very, very, like you say, powerful. So. Okay, any other comments? Uh, Reese? Yes. Uh, Dave, I did put my hand up, but let me just say um, that I was impressed by the call to action submitted by 43 staff people. I thought it was really well done. That's about a fifth of our staff. And I hope they're closely involved with uh, this project as it moves forward. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Any other comments? Any public comments? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, it's really good to see that kind of uh, overview being created. And now we're looking forward to a plan and a way of implementing some of these ideas and some of this uh, stuff that you have talked about. So moving on, get this off. Um, public appearances. Um, I believe Jane said there were two public comments to be read. Yes, there are two and I will read them right now. Okay. The first is from Nick Alva. And he wants this applied to the public comments and also to the budget um, item number 6.2.10. He says, dear commissioners, the commission at any time can rewrite, rewrite certain policies for Sonoma County Library to function even at the limited levels during this time of crisis. The library must have full staffing that is assured <clears throat> economic wholeness, fill vacancies and rehire extra help staff Stabilize, stabilization funds must, per Section 4, be utilized for and non-allocated funds assigned to budget and salaries. There is no need to increase the stabilization fund percentage. The crisis is now. There is no need to increase OPEB, which is a malleable obligation. Doing so will exacerbate short and midterm problems, not significantly alleviate long-term commitments, nor be of benefit towards some possible future crisis, likely less significant than the current crisis. With staff shortages, no volunteers, increasing retire retirements, employees sheltering and staff out per the quote, pr protocol in the event of a suspected COVID-19 case in the workplace, end quote, 
non-utilization of appropriate funds for staffing could have a negative impact now during this crisis upon the commitment of the commission administration and the staff to serve the public. There are serious concerns that the commission is not getting a clear perspective of the finances and staffing needs and might not be getting a sense or understanding of each department's perspective or goals. Please, as has been past practice, have the library director be more active in the presentations regarding major decisions and have division managers present verbally to the library commission, allowing for direct interaction between administration, the commission and the public. Again, that's Nick Alva. The next one is from Dan Cottrell. Dear commissioners, in quote, the ant and the grasshopper, end quote, if Aesop tells us that saving is a virtue, the ant saved for winter and when the grasshopper came knocking for help, they scolded it and left it to starve. Leaving aside the ants less than compassionate reaction, there is something relevant here for us at the library. We saved for winter. Now that winter is here, we have ants telling other ants to eat less by saying, quote, there, sure, there's a blizzard, but what if there's another, end quote. The packet warns of the four seasons of flood, fire, earthquakes, and drought. Has the library ever used these funds in response to these events? Does it propose to amend the fund balance policy to mandate covering expenses associated with these events, or is it making a disingenuous argument? This is a once in a century pandemic and we're told what? The COVID-19 doesn't qualify as an emergency. Meanwhile, despite the fall in demand, rents are static. Other costs like food and medicine have risen. When the library asked staff for cost saving ideas and the staff suggested cutting back on outside consultants, the library told staff that contracts are inviolable. Fair enough, yet they seem intent on going back on our contract to reduce our pay and benefits when we and the local businesses we patronize need them the most. The commission must ask itself, is this an emergency? Should our colony starve despite our savings? Thank you, Dan Cottrell. That's all. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, any other comments online? I have uh, my hand up. Okay, I see Kim Popa, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Kim? Can you hear me? Okay, go ahead. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, my name is Kim Popanuk. I am the children's librarian at Northwest Library in Santa Rosa, and I have a prepared statement. Dear commissioners, I strongly oppose the library's current proposal to cut disaster relief pay for library specialists and other staff in order to balance the budget. You are proposing that staff in the bottom half of the salary schedule work only three days per week and use their hard-earned vacation and sick leave two days per week to supplement their pay. Full-time workers would be docked four days per pay period. This is short-sighted and inhuman. Comparing people's livelihoods to line items in the budget, such as materials, supplies, equipment, and furnishings, demeans the value of the people who provide the service in our essentially service-based organization. There is no need to cut staff pay when the library has sufficient funds, including the general fund, the reserves, and all the unallocated funds. I heard the director recommend to the Library Commission Finance Committee that an additional $1.5 million that was found in the budget should be used to pay staff and rehire one half of the extra help who were let go. That means adding, not cutting staff. The library can well afford disaster pay for its most valuable. Reese saw the raised hand all by yourself. What? Hello? Can't keep going, Cam. Oh, sorry. The library, can sure well, what happened. the library can well afford disaster pay for its most valuable and least paid employees. They are Sonoma County Library's own essential workers. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Kim. Um, are there any other public comments? Tom, uh, John? 
John Kotzner. Hi, Reese. Yeah, can you hear me, Reese? Oh, late. Yeah. Now I can, yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, give me just half a second. I, I emailed one to Jane, but I guess maybe I had put it at 6.2, but uh, I do have it here on my phone, so I can read it from there if that's okay. Okay. Um, so let me do the quick on my phone here, and I'll, I'll be able to read it. Give me half a second here. Um, uh. <clears throat> Well, let me go to my email. Sorry. Uh, it'll just take me half a second. Sorry. Um, so, sent. Yeah, so let me go to. Okay, here it is. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so mine is regarding uh, item 6.2, but I wanted to make it as a public statement, but I thought Jane was going to read it. But anyhow, uh, dear library commissioners, in looking over the proposed uh, fiscal year 2021 budget, it appears that there's a recommendation for a 1.5 million addition to the OPEP fund. Normally, a 750,000 payment would be considered sufficient. Currently, there's a 5.3 million uh, budget uh, for that fund, with 800,000 being over the original recommendation by the OPEP committee. Thus, it raises questions why in the middle of a budget crisis that the Sonoma County Library would double the amount for this fund. What evidence is there currently that a 1.5 million payment is necessary? Was payment into OPEB in fiscal year 1920 considered insufficient? If so, by how much? If not, why double the amount now? What are the current needs projections for this fund in the fiscal year 2021? Regulation 3 in the OPEB policy states, thereafter continue with a funding approach that is appropriate to both its circumstances and long-term sustainability, carefully evaluating options annually as part of the budget development process and adopting an annual resolution as part of the budget approval process that explicitly identifies the selected option and the rationale for selecting that option. What analysts have suggested that it is necessary to fund OPEB at the 1.5 million level? What is the rationale for making such a decision amidst the current fiscal concerns? Since this is an irrevocable trust, wouldn't be better to wait to see if there's an actual need for additional monies and fund it at a level that sustains it. Thank you for considering these questions, John Kozner. Okay, any other comments? Hopefully, John, your questions will be answered when we get the budget. Uh, okay, thanks, place. Reed. And I'll mute myself. Okay, any other comments? Okie dokie. Madam Chair, just for clarification, my understanding is that the public comments are for items that are not elsewhere on the agenda. So it's terrific that we've heard from, from uh, staff, uh, but I think generally speaking, we're supposed to be listening to those when the item on the agenda is actually on, that we're, when we're discussing that. Yeah, I agree. However, you get in the middle of it and then you figure out that, oh, and I, Absolutely. Let them go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so moving on, there are no library advisory boards or foundation or friends to give reports, I don't believe. So we'll move into the director's report. Thank you. Um, so my report is in the packet and it is, of course, a small portion of the 267 pages in the packet. Um, but I know you've read every single word in this packet. I just want to call out a couple of things and stress uh, a little bit of the, the work that staff is doing. Um, we talked before about how, um, you know, the library closed in March due to the uh, COVID-19 crisis and the public health officers rulings and the state um, direction. Um, since that time, we've been accomplishing quite a lot behind the scenes and moving forward. We now have about 95, excuse me, 95% 95 of our staff back at work in one capacity or another. We are offering uh, curbside service at all of our locations. Uh, we began um, accepting returns last week. And so just to put that into perspective a little bit for you, 
we would love to be able to do more for our communities. We'd love if we could be open. We'd love to do a lot of things. Um, it's just not safe or advisable at this point. And it's not just our library. All libraries in the state, all libraries in the world basically are in the same situation. So I did some research um, looking specifically in California and specifically at uh, libraries that are either nearby or similar in one way or another to Sonoma County. Um, San Mateo County and Santa Cruz, which are both JPAs, are closed to the public. They are offering curbside, but that's all. Uh, Sacramento is a JPA. Um, they are closed. They're offering curbside. A few of their locations began um, offering computer appointments on June 25th, and they suspended that on July 2nd. Uh, Placentia Public Library is a library district. They, um, they are closed, they are telecommuting. Um, they began, they opened with limited access on June 22nd, and as of July 3rd, the director announced that they would be rolling back to phase one. Um, Los Angeles Public Library just began curbside yesterday. Um, and San Francisco Public Library, I'm sorry, that was last week for, for Los Angeles. San Francisco, all sites are closed. They're offering only online resources. They are not doing curbside. Um, to this, at this point, to my knowledge, the only libraries in California that are open in any capacity are uh, Lake County has one location open part-time for grab and go services and uh, El Dorado County um, is currently, has some of their locations open part-time. Those of course are uh, counties that are much less populous than Sonoma County and have had uh, less of an impact from the COVID-19. So I just wanted to reassure you in case you thought we weren't moving fast enough, we are doing as much as we can in order to provide services to the community, but to keep our staff and our communities safe and to follow the health advisories uh, that, are, that are being uh, distributed. Um, so I do wanna point out also, please look through this report. The staff put a lot of work into it and there's so, so much information here. The monthly um, report on uh, services during this period if you look at curbside pickup, um, it's been really busy. They've been uh, checking out about 500 items per day, which um, amounts to, for the month of June, which were when it started, about 15,000 items were collected through curbside. However, you compare that to June of 2019, when we circulated 250,000 items. So, when I say we're doing as much as we can under the circumstances, it's a relative thing. Um, libraries are changing. We know that's happening under the circumstances. We don't know to what extent they're going to um, get back to normal and when that will happen. So we are, we are doing these things. We're doing curbside, we're doing uh, deliveries, we're doing virtual programming, outreach, everything we can think to do now, but we're also keeping an eye on the future and what will our library services look like in the future? Will it go back to normal? Do we have a new normal? What kinds of innovative things can we try? So as, as you've heard several times in the past, we don't wanna let a good crisis go to waste. We are trying to look to the future and what Sonoma County Library can and should be in the future. So there's a lot of planning, a lot of, of um, brainstorming going on in the background. And in the meantime, there's some really wonderful work being done by our staff. So I, I applaud everyone's efforts and um, thank you for your support. Thank you very much, Dan. That was information that I think people needed to hear um, especially what other libraries are doing. I, I, I totally understand. Thank you. Right. Any other comments? 
I see somebody's hand flash. Okay. Yeah, this is Deborah. Yeah. Um, I, okay. I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask Anne, the, the, the notion of um, what libraries can look like and what they will look like um, is obviously part of the planning process that you're doing at the staff level that we're going to be doing at the commission level and and um, and and I think certainly we're going to have to reach out to the community. So I was wondering, um, given the you know given the 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 time that we're in, are you having much opportunity to talk to the communities to talk to um, you know I, we're probably not at that at that space yet, but I think um, you know as part of the strategic planning, I think we need to really get out in the communities and ask them what they want, what they need, um, and how it's different than the last time we asked them that question. Oh, I agree completely. Um, you know, we uh, several of us went through the Harwood training. Um, when was that? It seemed like a million years ago. Last year. It focuses on turning outward and, and asking what is, what is the community interested in? What are their aspirations rather than asking what the library do for you. Um, and, and that's the kind of focus we're going to take as we reboot our strategic planning process. Um, we're hoping to do some, some different types of things. We, obviously, we can't have open houses in our locations, but we can do virtual town halls that are kind of targeted to different geographic areas or service areas uh, or different populations we can do the same sort of thing with the staff and with the commission. Um, we we want to find as many ways as possible to reach as broad an audience as possible. And particularly, <laughs> this is very appropriate in light of the racial equity presentation we had, we need to reach all demographics in our county. Um, right. one, of the, one of the things we found in the in the previous work that we did toward the strategic plan was that it was heavily skewed toward the older white demographic uh, because they're they're they are library supporters. God love them, and um, and we don't want to discount that, but we want to make sure that we get everybody else's input as well. So um, we're going to look for as many ways as possible to to do that outreach. Super. Thanks. Okay, um, Barbara. Oh, okay. Karen, you're next. Barbara, go ahead. Oh, um, I guess this is the place. I, I did read all those reports and they're fascinating and that's the kind of detail that I love. I, you know, really, I, I like to know all the operational things. I just had a couple of quick questions regarding the, you know, how we're trying to, um, you know, make these places safe. Uh, of course, it's very depressing that, you know, today we went backwards, you know, and so it's going to be a while till we can even make another step forward. But I saw that we have purchased filters for at least some of the buildings. And I was just wondering if what, what that does, you know, the filters that we have, how much safer that makes things. And, and also curious about our ability to get the plexiglass and, and, you know, what our timing is on all this stuff, since everything is completely unknown <laughs> about, you know, how we're, how we're moving, able to move forward. So since I wrote that, it turns out we do have the plexiglass. We've been able to source enough to uh, supply the needs of all of our locations. So we'll be able to get that in place um, well before any kind of opening scenario. Um, in terms of the filters, I, I don't think I can answer that question. I know they're, they're good filters. I don't know what the difference is between that and what we have currently. Um, Dave Tucheva, are you on the call tonight? So, yes, I'm available to answer that that question. So yes, thank what you. we have um, as far as our filtering, filtering um, um, the present um, uh, knowledge about filtering is that um, diluting the air is is more effective than filtering the air. So um, the more air you let in, the the more diluted the air inside becomes, and that's that's the most effective against um, this situation. Um, currently. So all this is evolving as we go. Um, so what we have in there now, so we have a protocol for fire season. Um, so we have put in all our COVID or our, our fire season filters, which kind of 
help with dissipating smell from smoke. Um, there's no filtering system presently on the market that's been tested effective against blocking out COVID. So even in protected uh, environments such as a hospital um, surgical room, they have very high end filters in there. Um, there nothing has been proven to, to, to work or not work. So they don't have, they haven't tested it. So our systems are not protective environments. So they're, they're not set up to take any higher filtering than we actually do. Um, you cannot limit air coming into these uh, systems or you will damage the equipment. Um, so, and then HIPAA systems are, are air systems that filter the air after it's gone through the equipment. So you need additional equipment within the air ducts to receive those kind of filterings. And that is only for protected environments. And unfortunately, libraries are not considered an environment that needs to be protected. Does that answer your questions? So, so it's made it uh, somewhat, at least we're more prepared for fire season. I, I, I'm un understanding, but uh, it, it doesn't make it, what we've done is, uh, is good, but it doesn't really protect either it the does. staff or, or, or potential future patrons any, in any significant way. Is that kind of right? Kind of right. We have increased the uh, the fans to go to be on and off hours to bring in fresh air. Because fre that's what we're being told. Fresh air is going to be the best way to keep the to to provide a safer environment. So, right. but nothing is proven to be able to provide a completely safe environment at this time. Yeah, but just more safe. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. You're welcome. Hey, okay. uh, Karen. Yeah getting low on my hand. Um, just to uh, comment as it's kind of a local piece of information, the Sonoma State University Library will be closed through the fall um, to the public, to our public students and faculty. So that's uh, just to give you a little context. Wow. Um, Vince? Yeah, and to get back to your, your comment about um, looking to diversify the clientele of the library and things like that. I know being a teacher with the schools right now and figuring out hybrid learning and potentially distance learning that teachers are looking to do a lot of additional professional development in terms of what resources are available digitally for when we go back to school, however that's gonna look. Have you guys thought about, particularly with regards to our underserved areas, have you guys thought about maybe capitalizing on that a little bit in, in terms of being able to put some of your services into place uh, for teachers to use and coming back to school? Um, we have a lot of things in place uh, for, for students and for teachers. Um, we have the, the student one card and all the resources yeah. that are affiliated with that. And I know that um, Rachel Ikaza, our education coordinator has been doing some work with the schools. Um, I'm, I'm not prepared to, to comment on exactly what she's been doing, but we can, we, I can find out and let you know. Thank you. Andy, did you raise your hand? Yes, I, I did, Reese. Sorry, I had to, had to okay. unmute. Um, and thanks for sharing this information. I was just struck as, as Dave was talking about the fact that, uh, you know, di diluting the air is so much more effective than filtering. Has there been any discussion about taking any of our services outdoors? Um, not at this point. Uh, that's one of the things we'll be looking at as we develop our reopening plans. So, it, I mean, right now we're offering the curbside pickup and that's outdoors. Um, but in terms of, of more of our services, no, we haven't uh, developed any, any significant plans along that way. Um, I think it's a very good idea, though. Uh, yeah, if you, could, uh, if you could look into that with the team, I, I would certainly... Sure. Appreciate it. I guess I, I guess I just want to echo what you're saying. I, I feel like right now the services that we can provide are skewed toward the uh, more affluent uh, demographic that we have served in the past, and not necessarily meeting the needs of uh, the uh, communities of color and the uh, mm -hmm. socioeconomically disadvantaged in Sonoma County. 
if we could bring some of our services outdoors, we might be able to close that gap a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Barbara? Uh, yes, uh, within the report, there was a reference to lunch at the library, which I know was very successful last year. Uh, a lot of kids got their, their lunches at the library branches. And I see that I wasn't sure. It sounded like we got a $37,000 grant for that, but we're working in partnership with uh, Redwood Food Bank and other things. How does that work? Are we just uh, transferring our funding to the Redwood Food Bank and they're, they're doing the distribution or... Do we have a connection to this uh, lunch at the this year? We are uh, we're not transferring our funding to them. No, they they are providing the lunch portion of it, and we are providing um, giveaway books and and uh, crafts, etc. Different things that can be uh, coordinated with the with the food service to provide a uh, a good um, experience for the children. So, so this is a, a, some outreach that we're actually doing. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, identified um, back to what Rand, uh, Andy was saying about, you know, we are, you know, out there with books and, and materials and so forth. Is, is it understood as a library do, uh, that's doing that? Um, well, you know what, the Kathy DeWeese is on the call and she's uh, working on this program. So if Kathy, if you could speak to that, that would be wonderful. I would be happy to. Um, so again, we are not able to, to offer lunch service in the libraries this year, and we actually are not able to provide actual outreach. Like we don't have tables where staff is sitting out there handing out books. We were we had to um, find arrangements where we would drop off, deliver a box of books, a box of resources, and then their staff and their lunch program is distributing them. So it, so it is very different from previous years. So, so nobody who's receiving these books and stuff know that they're coming through the, from the library then? They do actually. Um, we, we did provide them with uh, documentation, posters and flyers and that kind of stuff. Every book given out has a reading, um, what do you call it? A reading log inside of it. And okay. uh, the partners that we've been working with have been talking up that it's the library. Primarily, I mean, Redwood Food Bank is always a partner. And then we're working with sites in Burbank Housing, we're working with Boys and Girls Clubs, we're working with some of the school sites, um, really trying to reach into to every community. In fact, I think that we've got further reach than we normally do because like, for example, in Windsor, um, the library is not eligible to be a summer lunch site. But so now we have, I think, three different sites in Windsor that we're distributing um, the lunch material to, to other lunch sites. Does that make sense? Well, that, that's great. So that we are getting the, um, at least it's, it's being acknowledged throughout the community that the library is there providing, um, you know, books. Yeah, and, and I did get, just get today, um, a communication from our contact, our partner at, at Burbank Housing asking for a statement or a, something that they can write up in their like kind of weekly tweets, or not tweets, what's the word, um, SMS messages that they send out to their, their families. So yeah, right. we definitely are getting the recognition. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions about the management reports? Okay, so let's move on to the monthly budget report. That'd be 6.2.10. Jody, I'm assuming it would be you. It will. Um, let me share my screen. And it's, there it is. All right, can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. um, although the print on this one is a little small, so I'll try to. Uh, so this report is for May, which was the penultimate month of the fiscal year. Um, we did receive two payments uh, in uh, sales tax. Uh, let's see, different amounts. Um, 
859.60, and then 723.193. So a total of 1.5 in revenue uh, for the month from sales tax. Um, so we're, I am fairly sure, although invoices are still coming in for year end, that we'll finish the year in the black, which is good. And we may also have some to roll over to help us with our expenditures. So uh, down to this next page. So I got the question at our finance committee of why the PG&E bill was so high. And you can see there are other instances when it kind of looks like it's spiking. Um, the reason for this is because to get this report, I was clicking on utilities and just entering the whole utilities number. It's actually broken down into PG&E, which for May was uh, 26,000. And then the rest are things like uh, sewer and water and our waste program. So um, at next month, when we go over um, a little bit of year end, um, these can be broken out so that we know exactly what part of this PG&E was. Um, other uh, expenditures over 25,000 in May were for uh, books, uh, janitorial service, um, our quarterly payment to Khalifa, which is our internet, and uh, more books, uh, some architecture work. Um, the architects, um, if this was for uh, Roseland, um, that may be happening, but we do have other architects that we've told to pause on projects. Um, we had one of the branch restrooms uh, needing some work. So we had some plumbing uh, expenses and uh, we've uh, paid more payments for our mobile uh, library as well as attorney's fees. Does anyone have questions on that? So this is our uh, rolling tally of what we've been uh, spending on COVID-19 um, just in supplies. Um, this does not include um, any you know, staff disaster pay. It, it's just a look at, at what we need specifically for COVID at our um, last finance committee meeting, there had been a door, uh, an automatic opening door that had been applied. Uh, you will no longer see that on this list. It was actually uh, a door put in for an um, ADA uh, restroom at one of the branches. So, you know, to date, um, We've, we've had another month since then, so we'll you know, see the increase um, uh, in June with more people back at work. So that's just kind of something that would grow at a commensurate rate, uh, the more people we have back. Uh, but the running total to date is uh, 39,000. Are there any questions about that? And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Jody. Sure. Okay, moving on to commission reports. Um, start with the chair. And mostly just want to thank you for having had the opportunity to work with all of you and to work with the library and to give back to my community in the way I've been able to by being the commissioner. Um, there is one thing that I need to add to what I've said, and you can read it, it's pretty easy. Um, we had an item on the draft agenda regarding policing because some of the staff is concerned about the policing methods and you know, the talk about defunding the police and, and changing some of their behavior, et cetera. And we pulled it um, to 
address at a future date because we needed more information on what was actually happening within the library. Uh, what kinds of incidents we've had over the last few years, uh, how they've been handled, has it been successful? Have we had to call the actual police or has our security been able to handle it? How well trained is our security, et cetera, et cetera. So we felt like we needed a lot more information before we brought that topic before the commission. So I don't want anybody, staff, commissioners, public, to think we're not going to address it. We just need more information before we can even begin to think about it. So hopefully within the next month or two, you'll see it pop back up. So that was my report. Okay, where's my list? David Cahill, I know you're number one. Um, anything on your commissioner always, report? I, yes, I, I, I always try to be number one. Um, well, C, you are. <laughs> addition within the pack, I'd like to uh, have essentially a farewell comment here to you. Um, you've done an amazing job integrating new commissioners and a new director in the past two years as chair. Um, I did a count the other day and was appalled to realize that come August 1st, there will only be three commissioners out of 11 who've been on the commission longer than two years. This is essentially mostly new commission, new director, and we seem to have done really well working together, and I'm sure that will continue under your successor, whoever that might be, but we only have one candidate so far, but you never know. So thank you for all your work, and it's a big success. Thank you, David. Okay, Deborah. No, no, Vince, do you have a report? Excuse me. I do not. I just want to wish you farewell on your next journey and thank you for uh, onboarding me over these last uh, eight weeks or so. It's been great. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Deborah? Do you have anything, any kind of report? I don't even see you. Where did you go? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, Andy? Yes, my report is in the packet, Reese, but I'd also like to thank you so much for everything that you've done for the commission and for me personally. Uh, you provided a very warm welcome when I first joined and uh, were very, very helpful in giving me some context and background as I walked in without any kind of handoff. And I'm just thankful for your leadership and everything that you have brought to the library over the two years that, I, that I've been here. So thank you very much. Welcome. That was one thing I wanted to do was get a better commissioner training onboarding process, but I didn't get there. So, okay, Deborah. Thank you, Andy. Uh, my report is in the packet. Um, and I just wanted to let Vicki know that I got thrown off the call somehow. I wasn't touching anything, I swear. Um, so, so suddenly now I have, I've had to change computers and everything, but as long as, um, as I'm glad I'm back for, um, to say how, uh, how wonderful you've been as a, as a commissioner and, um, uh, through some very difficult times. And so thanks very much. I'm sure we're going to say this at the end of the meeting as well, but, um, but you've also been, a a, a terrific person to walk the newer commissioners like I have been uh, through the process. So thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, Paul. Um, I want to say, Reese, that uh, yeah, I think you're too young to retire. And I think, you, I think <laughs> I we have a lot of good years <laughs> as a library commissioner still, you know. Um, but thank you. You've, I've, you know, you and I have worked together for many years on the commission and I appreciate your, um, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen anybody else on the commission that's been so, how should I say, um, uh, research oriented. You know, some of, the, some of the PowerPoints you did were amazing. You did a lot of research. I know you did a lot of work uh, just being the chair and, it, and it's a, it's a, it's a full-time job in a lot of ways and uh, so, I personally appreciate all the work you've done for the commission. Thank you. And uh, the only thing I have to report is uh, the, the Petaluma uh, friends do a 
newsletter and we decided to still continue to do that. So I wrote my little column as the commissioner. And uh, so we're there, they're anxious for the library to open. Um, and I did have discussions. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say this to Vicki. Vicki and I had a nice long discussion about uh, the possibility of bringing computers outside and we just not there yet. We, we, can't, we can't get the materials and I do understand that. But uh, I wanna say the staff is thinking about that. And uh, that's, that's really one of the most, one of the most important things the library provides is internet service and, um, and uh, the computer. So uh, I, that we are working on that. I am getting pressure from above here to get the library open so people can use the computers. It's uh, <laughs> friends and neighbors. Uh, but anyway, so that I just wanted to say that. And uh, thanks again, Reese, for all your work. You're welcome. Tom. Uh, you're talking and I can't hear you. I have no particular report, but I do want to thank you for being our chair and being a nice person. Thank you. I tried. Okay, Barbara. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I've uh, spent a lot of quite a bit of time in the last month or so uh, doing outreach with everyone I can think of to keep people up to date on what we're doing in the library. I want to thank Anne again for those uh, weekly reports to the commissioners because it's there's a lot of information then that I have to to be able to pass forward. It's very helpful in terms of chain of communication. Um, so my reports in the packet. There's a couple of photos in the packet, and um, with regard to our chair Reese. Um, I don't know anyone who's been uh, or who is as utterly committed to the library as you are. I, you're just you know solid as a rock in terms of your commitment. I know you put an enormous amount of time into this. Um, you and I met at All Lab Day, going back to All Lab, and then through the Measure M campaign and the Measure Y campaign and all the other things that we've done. And we, I had the pleasure of serving as your vice chair for a year. And um, I know how much you put into this. And um, it, it's hard to say goodbye. And I, I tagging on to what David said, it, it's, it's kind of astonishing to me because I still feel like a new kid like you did, Reese. So we came on basically at the same time on the commission. And now, you know, everybody's except, I guess, Paul and I uh, go back to, to when, when the new commission started. So anyway, we'll miss you. And um, I know that you'll always and forever be committed to the library because, um, you know, that's who you are. So thank you for all of your work. It's um, uh, been a pleasure serving with you. Thank you, Reese. You're welcome. Okay, Randall. Um, no report from Windsor, really. But I do want to wish Reese the best of luck in the rest of her life and her next projects. Thank you, Randall. Okay, uh, Joel Newberg. Do you have uh, any kind of report to make? Uh, I don't have a report. I've just started uh, attending uh, meetings of uh, uh, the Lantern Group and Sebastopol Library. And uh, I guess I'll be attending the uh, Friends of the Library board meeting uh, tomorrow. Okay. But I'd also uh, like to wish Reese well uh, and thank her for uh, getting me started here anyway. Okay, okay. Karen. That's no particular report, although I will catch up next month with a few small items. But I wanted to say, Reese, thank you for being, for boarding me so well. Um, for the many, many miles you crossed Sonoma County in your vehicle to, on behalf of libraries for being a, a great chair and um, being uh, and op offering great ideas and, and really working on behalf of the library and the commission. Just very appreciative and uh, we'll miss you. And I believe that leaves me and I have to tell you that you probably will not be totally rid of me um, I have been told that I will not be let entirely go, but at the same time, I need to pace it differently than I have been as a commissioner. 
So anyway, um, those Fidanya, it's probably the one phrase I remember from my college languages. So goodbye, but not yet. On we word we move. Okay, uh, committees. Um, Director's Evaluation Committee met uh, last Friday and I unfortunately was not able to attend um, at the last minute. So Deborah is the one who uh, I guess chaired it. So Deborah, you wanna? Sure, we met and um, just before just before the lockdown uh, occurred, we were about to present in with the final evaluation. And so um, what we did this week was um, rethink some of the goals because the goals were um, in a different time, uh, thinking about a library that had uh, that had a lot different immediate future, and um, so we amended uh, the uh, the evaluation and um, and and are going to file it. So it's uh, we we met with Ann, um, and uh, and and had a good conversation, and um, and so it will be on file. And we can talk about it additionally. Uh, okay. Directors can directors can have access to that when it's on the file, but we're not distributing it. Okay. Uh, finance committee. I Randall? had a question about the director. Oh, excuse me. Uh, did you set up her goals for the coming year? We did. We did. Would that be reasonably public information? We can probably make some of it. We can make some of it public. We're, we'll 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 just we'll just um, uh, pull it. And any objection to that? We can. No objection. Okay. All right. We'll put something. We'll figure oh, out a way, and I'll make sure that I talk to you about it, Randall. How about that? Well, goals are good, right? Goals are good. Okay, finance committee. Uh, there's a long report in the packet. Uh, it'll be in a discussion item much later in this meeting where we go over the budget. We did a lot of talking about it, but we need to we need the input from the full commission to get the budget right. We didn't think it was something the committee should just arbitrarily vote on. So uh, that'll be coming up. That's it. Okay, um, advocacy. Uh, the advocacy report is in the is in the packet, but we will. There's an additional item that cropped up last week that is advocacy related that we will be talking about later in the meeting. Is I can't hear. Is somebody talking? I'm sorry, David. That was David. Oh, David. Oh, uh, no, nothing. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so that was the advocacy committee. And uh, Measure Y oversight, um, Walt Frazier is newly appointed by Commissioner Joel Newberg from Sebastopol to replace Bruce Robinson. Um, so he'll be the Sebastopol representative on the uh, Measure Y committee. Okay. Um, their next meeting is the 28th of July. Is that right, Jane? Yeah, yes, that's right. At uh, three from two, to, two to four. Two to four on the 28th, virtually. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I know, I don't have them on here, but I know, are there any other liaisons or committee reports that need to be made? Um, I know like the foundation people, I don't know quite where they stand, if they've been meeting at all. Um, I believe, Tom, are you the liaison to the foundation? What? Mm -hmm. Just 
Yes, I'm the liaison, and they have been meeting, and they have uh, in the reports there, uh, you'll see that uh, they're starting to meet with Siri on a weekly basis, trying to build up their, their uh, membership on their board and so forth. And so it's, it's uh, more positive and they're moving along and, and I don't feel as negative about them as some may. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so moving on. Where am I going? I didn't turn it over. Um, we have three library appointments. So we'll start with, um, yeah, Sebastopol. And what we do, Joel, for your information and for Vince's information, um, you read the draft motion and then we vote on it. Okay? So if you would like to read the draft motion, if you have it in front of you, if not, I could read it for you. It's page 79. Uh. I don't think I can get to page 79. <laughs> okay, I'll read it then, save you time. I move by resolution that the Sonoma County Library Commission appoint the following applicant to the term as listed. Key Nethery to an advisory position on the Sebastopol Library Advisory Board for a term ending June 30th, 2024. Okay, all those, are any comments? You'll need to take a roll call vote Yes, I know. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any comments? Could we ask uh, what his background is? He, he, he has a background in, uh, in uh, computers and uh, technology, and he seemed like he'd be a very good person to have on the uh, lab. So, uh, both Matthew and I talked to him uh, just on the phone, you know, we, uh, I guess, interviewed him. Cool. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Do we so need we'll a second? Yeah. I'll second. All righty. So roll, David Cahill. Yes. Okay, Vince Dart Darty. <laughs> Doherty, yes. Doherty, okay. Yes. I will screw it up. Let me tell you. Don't be done yet. <laughs> You've already checked out, huh, Reese? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> okay, so that was a... That was a yes. Okay. Deborah Doyle. Yes. Andy Elkine. Yes. Paul Heavenridge. Yes. Tom Hauser. Yes. Barbara McKenzie. Yes. Randall Neff. Yes. Karen Schneider. Yes. Joel Newberg. Yes. Okay, and I make it unanimous. So he's been unanimously appointed to the library's, uh, Sebastopol's Library Advisory Board. Uh, he, she? He. He. He, Nethery. Okay. Uh, Reese, I just now, have, a, I have a quick question actually about that. Yes. As the Katadi um, commission member, I haven't been asked to do that. Is that something that Katadi does as well, or is that? Uh, they go for different terms and some of them they come in at different times and they roll out at different times it's not doesn't seem to be consistent okay and so when somebody goes off your lab and you need to fill the position then uh you need to be in, need to be in touch with your lab president and find okay. out where all that stands where the membership stands okay because what a commissioner is is we're a liaison between the commission and the lab we are not an official voting member in any way, shape, or form of the lab. So if there's ever a vote, you can't vote. Uh, we carry information about what's happening with the commission and the library to them. Um, uh, the library staff attends the meetings. And um, yeah, I just lost it. Anyway, um, yeah, we don't have a vote. So each city is given. Is Just given liaisons. We carry information. Yeah. Okay. And we. Oh, I know what I was going to say. And like Joel just said, 
you when a, a new person is being appointed, the library the library branch manager interviews them, and then the commissioner interviews them, and they agree on appointing them or not, and then they bring it to the commission, and um, it goes from there. Gotcha. So it's not like Measure Y where the commissioner appoints somebody. Okay. Nope. Okay. Nope. It's not like the Measure Y. With the Measure Y, you just appoint somebody for the term that right. you're there. Right. To the Measure Y committee. Okay. Re Reese, can I clarify? Uh, uh, Runner Park, Katati is the only oddball library um, because Katati doesn't have a library. And right. so oh, that's right. And he's Katati. called the Runner Park Katati Library. And so a lot of something like the, like Katati doesn't have a separate lab member on that it's they're kind of jointly interviewed and jointly put on and our our lab has uh, not been really active we've suffered from getting uh people on there um i've been seeing that a lot of the other labs are starting to meet virtually but we haven't right now we haven't been a very active lab but i know our branch manager is going to be working on it as soon as he has time okay thank you Thank you. Yeah, you might talk to Phil, I guess, would be who you'd talk to. Okay, I'll reach and, out. Yeah, it would be you, Barbara, and um, Phil who would interview them. Right, okay. And then you'd come to an agreement. So each branch library has like its own lab that works for that mm -hmm. branch. Mm -hmm. Right. It works okay. for that branch. Okay. And they were created to give a community input into the commission, you know, as kind of a connector between the community and the commission. Got you. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. And they've been more or less successful in you know, depending on the community. Okay. And I hope that helps you, Joel, too, in the explanation. Okay, so now we're at Healdsburg. Andy, do you want to read the um, draft? Motion? Yes, I will. Thanks, Reese. I move by resolution that the Sonoma County Library Commission appoint the following applicant to the term as listed. Jesus Guzman, to an advisory position on the Healdsburg Library Advisory Board for a term ending on June 30th, 2024. I'd just like to mention that uh, John uh, Haupt, the, the uh, branch manager and I uh, had a, a Zoom interview with Jesus and we are very excited about uh, bringing him onto the lab. He's a, a lifelong Sonoma resident, uh, a graduate of Sonoma State, has a master's degree in public policy from the Goldman School at UC Berkeley, has lived in Healdsburg for the last four years. Uh, he has a young family. He's fluent in Spanish, and his work experience is focused on public policy with an emphasis on uh, affordable housing and social justice. So we are super excited. He's very enthusiastic about the library and we think he's going to be a great addition. Righty. Sounds great. It's great to hear, especially in view of the report earlier. It begins to kind yeah. of make some of those connections. Okay, so any other comments, questions? All righty, so we'll do the roll call. Um, do we want a second? Do we want a second on the motion? Oh, second, this is Deborah. One. I'm sorry. Second. So Deborah was the second. Okay. Sorry about that, Jane. No problem. Okay. David Cahill. Yes. Uh, Vince. Yes. I didn't attempt your last name. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Deborah. <laughs> yes. Andy. Yes. Paul. Yes. Tom. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Randall. Yes. Joel. Yes. Karen. Yes. And I make it unanimous. Okay, wow. Jesus, welcome to the library advisory board in Healdsburg. Okay, and our final one for tonight for that is uh, Sonoma. And Tom, do you wanna? Uh, Joanne Sanders is the candidate. She's the current, she's a current member to reappointment. She's the uh, president of the, the lab, the chair, I guess it would be called. And she's a very forceful person and has good ideas and expresses them. So I move by resolution that the Sonoma County Library Commission reappoint the following applicant to the term as listed. 
Joanne Sanders to the advisory position on the Sonoma Library Advisory Board for terms ending on June 30, 2024. I'll second. Thank you. Okay, Paul seconded. Okay, any comments? Questions, thoughts? All righty, so we move on. David Cahill. Yes. Uh, Vince Doc. Yeah, Vince. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Andy. Yes. Paul. Yes. Tom. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Randall. Yes. Karen. Yes. Karen, was that a yes? Yes. Okay, Joel Newberg. Yes. Okay, and I make it unanimous. Okay, so we have new, three new lab members. Joanne has been around for a while and uh, two others. All righty. Reese, this is Tom Hauser. I, I, yes. I can't remember, did we vote on the resolution at the very beginning for our, our uh, honoree we're honoring tonight. I think there's supposed to be a resolution and I don't remember. Oh, there's a resolution. That. Yeah, we do have to vote. No, we did not okay. vote. And yes, okay. we should vote. Some, sometime let's do that. Well, why don't we do it right now? Access. Because we're moving to the consent calendar. So we'll, pardon? I just have to do that. Okay, I thought I heard somebody Somebody's saying not something. muted. Yeah. Somebody needs to mute themselves. Okay, um, so I read the resolution um, regarding Bruce Robinson. Um, anybody need me to reread it? Okay, do I hear a motion? I second. I second. I, I'd, I'd like the pleasure of, of a, or did you already do that, Reese? No, I, I thought didn't. you already moved it. Okay, I did. I'd like well, I'd like to move it and Paul's is seconding. Okay, I second. I'm okay, so <laughs> we've got that straightened out. And I apologize right. for forgetting that. Um, yeah, okay. So Barbara has moved it, Paul seconded it. So we'll go through on this one. Uh, David Cahill. Yes. Uh, Vince. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Andy. Yes. Paul Heavenridge. Yes. Tim Hauser. Yes. Barbara. A very enthusiastic yes. Okay, Randall. Yes. Karen. Yes. Joel. Yes. Yes. And I make it unanimous. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. I didn't have it written down, so I missed it. Okay, so we're at the consent calendar. Um, there are three things on the consent calendar. Is there anything that anybody wants to pull or set aside? Okay. Um, I move uh, adoption of the consent calendar. Second. Okay. And it's been seconded by Tom Hauser. Tom Hauser. All righty. So, no comments? All righty, so we're going to do accepting the consent calendar. We'll go down the list again. <coughs> Excuse me, David Cahill. Yes. Vince. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Andy. Yes. Paul Heavenridge. Yes. Tom. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Randall. Yes. Joel. Yes. Karen. Yes. And I make it unanimous. So the consent calendar has been adopted. Okay, now we're down to the line item budget. And I believe Jody Foster is the one to be taking care of this. Uh, and do you want Frost, to open actually. comments? Huh? <laughs> yes, I will open it and then I will turn it over to Jody Frost since Jody Frost. Frost excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. So. Yeah, we're going to present you a budget to approve tonight that is different from the framework that you approved in June. Uh, the approved framework represents an almost $7 million reduction from last fiscal year uh, to align with the library's priorities of keeping staff and services as whole as possible. We're recommending the use of unspent revenue 
along with some unassigned fund balance as a one-time measure. Um, even with this additional funding, the library will still sustain a $4 million reduction in its budget. And this is going to be very challenging for us. Um, as we discussed previously, our staff are, uh, they are enthusiastic, they are creative, they are innovative. They will find ways to make this work, but it will be challenging. Um, we're also going to ask you to put some of the unassigned fund balance into a variety of different places uh, to strengthen our ability to respond to future emergency situations and keep the library running long after the pandemic. Uh, so at this point, I will uh, turn it to Jody and she will walk you through the line item budget. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. Yep. Yes. Great. Oh, and you can hear me. Um, okay. So we are requesting your approval today for several items. One is to augment the approved budget framework by rolling over 1.7 million in unspent revenue from uh, this last fiscal year of 1920 to services and supplies. We're also asking for a one-time use of unassigned fund balance in the amount of 935,000 in order to retain all current staff and preserve half of the extra help hours that would still leave positions uh, that are vacant, frozen for the upcoming year. Um, we're also going to ask that you assign a little over 1.6 million from the unallocated uh, fund balance to increase the stabilization fund. It would bring it to 19% of our operating costs. Um, and also to assign 1.5 million from unallocated or unassigned fund balance to future OPEB payments. Um, that would leave 1.3 million in unassigned fund balance. We have a couple of options here. We could certainly leave it unassigned uh, for a future date. We could assign it to an infrastructure replacement fund because we don't have one and I think we should, um, or assign to um, augment the stabilization fund in terms of it being used as uh, emergency funding. Um, for the current and uh, sure to come in the future uh, challenges that we'll have. So when we look at our last year's budget, we anticipated uh, this amount in property tax up here are just what we expected to get in revenue. So some uh, unassigned uh, surplus or fund balance was added um, to kind of bump up the budget. And we had a budget of $36,422,403. And this chart below just breaks it down between property tax and sales tax, but also by category, salaries and benefits, services and supplies, and then capital. Here is the framework, the one on top, that was approved by um, yourselves in June. This amounted to a total budget of 29 million, broken down between our anticipated revenues of 19 million in property tax and 9.8 million in sales tax. Uh, this chart on the bottom shows the exact difference between the two budgets. It's a $6.8 million reduction from the year before. And why can we not make do with the framework that you um, approved uh, in June? Um, I mentioned this uh, before, but we, we have a lot of have tos. Um, in our department. There's a lot of infrastructure to maintain 
um, before collections and programming is even funded. So you can see our half twos down here, our salaries, benefits, retirement obligations, that's 66% of our budget. The facilities, the rent, utilities, the keeping the lights on and the water running and the buildings in habitable condition, that's 10% of your budget. All of our infrastructure for uh, technology, all of the, the technology services that we provide, that is 7% of our budget. And then you have uh, the services in human resources and budget and financing, and that uh, comprises 2% of the budget. That leaves 15% for collections and programming. But when this increases, this one gets smaller. So what we really want is to not let go of all our programming um, and, and that does mean more money uh, rather than the $6 million um, reduction. So here are some of the things that could go away. This is uh, by no means uh, any kind of um, a done deal. It's not that we're saying this is what's going to happen. It's to give you an example of the items that would need to be cut from the budget if we weren't able to use unspent revenue to roll over. You know, collections, their uh, budget for purchasing books and e-resources uh, would be reduced by a third. Uh, they will be decreasing the number of holds and checkouts allowed on popular ebook platforms uh, as well. In information technology, almost all hotspot services charges would be removed. Uh, we have a few in contract and those must be you know, honored for the term of the contract, but you're talking about 500,000 that would be uh, reduced. Um, Elimination of security services. Uh, this is a time when we are seeing that more money is needed in janitorial and this would let us put 200,000 more into those services. And programming could be further reduced. Uh, they had received almost 800,000 last year. Um, they've already been cut to 300,000. Um, and we know that programming is going to look different um, but this uh, could also be impacted uh, further. All right, so is someone trying to ask a question? No, let's okay. keep going. Okay. Um, as we're working on closing out uh, last year, it looks like we will have some unspent revenue. It's not found money, nothing's hidden. It's just that all my yelling and being a meanie about not letting people buy stuff did slow down our expenditures a bit. So this 1.7 would be rolled over into services and supplies where it is needed most. Can we I ask a question? Have... Yes. How soon will you have the correct value for that number? I.e., what's the surplus from last year? Uh, the Oh, well, that will come next month at okay. the meeting when I talk about year end. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it could end up being more. I'm, I'm hoping it's not less. Um, we're also advocating uh, 1.3, uh, sorry, 1.4 million dollars in savings by freezing 25 positions that are currently vacant. Um, there are two positions that would not be frozen, um, and those would be the two positions at the new Roseland branch. And then we're also asking for 935,000 of unassigned fund balance. And this would enable the library to utilize um, half of the extra help hours 
um, that they're accustomed to having. Okay. So our proposed budget ends up being 22 million in property tax, 10 million in sales tax for a total of 32,334,221 dollars. And when we look at this year's budget compared to last year's, you'll notice that property, the, uh, the amounts in property tax are not that far apart. The biggest hit by far has been to sales tax. And we're still in that area running on an assumption of how good or bad the revenues are going to be throughout the year, which is why we're gonna be looking at them every month. Um, our property tax has a lot of the have to's that we just can't put in measure Y. So it was important um, that we do have it as close to possible. However, this is still a $4 million cut to the library. And then this is a quick look at uh, each division. Um, we have nine, we have two new divisions uh, this year, um, marketing and community outreach and fund development. Uh, again, here you see the same total. Um, these are the numbers that have been entered into the county's budget system. Um, however, um, I want uh, to assure you that if you don't like part of this um, presentation or you, you know, vote against part of it, it's easy to go and fix. So I don't want you to think there's going to be some kind of a, a problem if what gets proposed isn't approved exactly. And then I wanted to talk about the use of our fund balance. Um, this use of an assigned fund balance to pay for salaries and benefits to be able to retain our employees, that's a, that's a one-time proposal. It's, it's really not a sustainable long-term strategy. Um, but thinking about our future financial stability uh, we're also proposing that you assign uh, the 1.6 million of unassigned fund balance to the stabilization fund. This would bring us up to 19% of our operating expenses. And then assigning 1.5 million of unassigned fund balance to future OPEB payments. So what our uh, OPEB policy says is that we had to do that uh, one payment of uh, 3 million between the two fiscal years. That has been satisfied. Now I believe we owe 10 years of $750,000 a year. Um, adding this to the money that's already assigned to OPEB would give us four years of payments. And the reason that I would uh, recommend this is, is only because we don't know yet what Measure Y is uh, going to do. So we wouldn't have to worry about it for four years. And that should give the economy a little time to recover. And then we have our unassigned amount of fund balance. This would be, a, this is a before and after look at the fund balance. So this was what we had in 1920. We had this big chunk of uh, unassigned fund balance. Now we have, um, we still have our capital projects, our restricted funds, the stabilization fund, OPEB. You can see OPEB has that 1.5 uh, added. And then we have this amount of unassigned. So it's a slightly lower fund balance because that 953,000 has been taken out. So Jody, this is Jody, this is Deborah. Could you flip back? I'm sorry, could you flip back to the, the one two two slides ago? It says it says the, the one about the 1.5 million of unassigned fund balance to OPEB. 
-hmm. you said it would cover four additional years, but the slide says two additional years. Um, we already have two years set aside. We have 1.5 million uh, allocated for OPEB payments now. Um, oh, that's right. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Got it. Um, um, can I can I give a little bit of history on some of this? I, I don't want to disrupt it, so I'll hold it to the end if you would like me to. But at some point in time, I'd like to give a little bit of history on this whole fund balance stuff. Okay. So I'll hold it till the end. Just know that I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, so we have reserved the funds for future emergencies, um, including the four seasons of California. This only means that these are easily anticipated and are not in the same category as a worldwide uh, pandemic. Um, uh, we have been paying for uh, our employees um, and we've been paying uh, considerable money, uh, both in disaster pay and um, supplies to keep our employees safe. So that, um, that has brought us to today. Um, we can also establish a replacement fund to be paid into annually in order to replace technology and facilities items when needed. Um, this would be less of a strain on divisions when having to replace end of life items out of their annual budget. Items that would be replaced out of this would include such things as the desktop computers, monitors, you know, so when one is purchased uh, the next year, a fourth or whatever it would cost. Um, wait, I have it written down in a, a less wonky manner. Okay, after the initial investment in the fund, which this 1.3 would be, amounts would be paid each year equal to the replacement cost divided by the life cycle of the item. So if you've got something like a truck in a vehicle replacement program, you're going to have a lot longer to pay for a truck than you will uh, computer equipment. Um, computer equipment uh, is usually three to five years, uh, depending on the warranty. But the idea of it is that the money would already be there when it needed to be replaced. Um, or as I said earlier, you can keep the funds unassigned until some point in the future. Uh, so once again, we're asking that you approve the rollover of unspent revenues into the 2021 budget in the amount of Roughly, I know this is a really exact number, but uh, we're gonna have to see until the very end. Um, to services and supplies, approve uh, one-time use of unassigned fund balance in the amount of 935,150 to retain all current staff and half of our extra help hours. Approve freezing vacant positions for the 2021 fiscal year for savings in salaries and benefits of 1.4 million and then approve uh, the amended use of unassigned fund balance where you see fit. <clears throat> Reese, did you wanna kind of dive in now because I think that's my last slide. Okay. Yeah, for those of you who haven't been around, um, the importance of the stability, uh, stabilization fund and OPEB. Um, when 2008 recession hit, the library was hit hard. They were not prepared and everything kind of, especially financially kind of went to, you know, it went bad. So along the way, we failed to pay into our OPEB fund like many, many agencies. And um, we failed to create the stabilization fund and keep that up. Eventually, we ended up before the grand jury. And I don't know if any of you have ever been in on grand jury meetings, but they are not fun by any way, shape or form. But coming out of that, which was like a year or two, and I, uh, a couple of years into my being on the commission, I think it was, um, we came to an agreement with them and that meant paying $750,000 a year to OPEB. And 
maintaining a stabilization fund of, I think it was 15% or greater. Now I'm not positive about that number, but, um, and they thought the greater would be better so that we did not get ourselves back into trouble like we had gotten into before. Um, paying the million and a half instead of only one payment this year. Oh, I need to say that when we created our thing and because we have held to it, the grand jury has been very pleased with our behavior and we have become the uh, exemplary agent that everybody wants to copy in taking care of this issue because I by no means were we the only agency that got caught in this this mess, this kerfunkel. So, but by doing the two payments ahead, I understand and some of the information that I get from the county is that sales taxes are one thing this year, but they anticipate them to go down, not back up so much in relation to expenses. So putting that money in to the stabilization fund and paying ahead on OPEB helps protect us in the future. And it's not even very far in the future. It's like only a couple of years ahead. And a couple of years, believe me, goes really fast. So that's why the focus on this, and that's the importance of this, putting the money into the stabilization fund and putting money into OPEB. It's to keep us actually afloat and keep us out of trouble with another grand jury investigation, which we really would not like to have. So I don't know how, you know, if that helps you understand what the importance of some of this is. So I think I got it all. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Reese. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Barbara. I have some comments, if this is a good time. Okay. Uh, I want to second what Reese has said about uh, in the uh, past problems with the uh, library not having enough money. Um, the rainy day fund, uh, when we, we uh, just a few years ago, the finance committee recommended increasing it from 12 and a half percent, I think it was, to 15 percent. So we're there. We're, we're uh, it is, um, I, I heard some of the comments before, public comments, that, that this is the rainy day and this is the time to use the fund. I, I understand that argument. I also think that we haven't even seen the rainiest of the days yet. Um, the future is so unknown to all of us. We don't know how bad this is gonna get. We haven't even begun to see what the impact is gonna be on the property tax, which is two thirds of our funding roughly. Uh, we're just have had a few months of seeing a significant impact on our sales tax. So we have to be cautious and conservative and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who would make that point. Uh, with regard to OPEB, so we uh, created an OPEB committee a few years ago. We uh, had outside uh, experts uh, working with us. We established the policy. I want to, I probably said this the last time, but I want to reiterate that this was the first step in a policy. So what we did with the plans that we made uh, and the plans that are currently being put forth doesn't take care of the whole problem by any means. This was the first step for it. We will know more about what our estimated liability is when we see this year's audit, but it's a, it's a big number and it's not going away. And just to let everybody know what OPEB is, is other post-employment benefits. And in our case at the library, it is just medical care and it's medical care for people who are in retirement. It's a big number. It's gonna to continue to, to, to be a significant expense. Uh, healthcare, of course, is, is not gonna get any cheaper. So I am uh, prepared to, uh, uh, you know, I'm swayed by the staff's arguments. I, I think this is a good intermediate uh, place to go. I think as we all agreed the last uh, meeting or so, we're gonna keep an eye on this probably monthly. Um, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't putting it away, you know, for the year, you know, by any means. And, um, you know, we're just, we're in, in serious uh, situation, you know, as, as an economy in California, nationally, locally, and, you know, we have to be cautious. And so um, I think the staff has done a good job in, in, um, in, sp in spelling this out. 
as, as uh, Jody said, normally we would not take a unassigned fund balance and use it on operating expenses. Normally that's for one-time expenses, but I'm prepared to, again, to, to uh, go along with that just because again, the unusual circumstances that we're in. So I appreciate the presentation. I'm, a pre I'm prepared to, uh, to vote for it. And again, with the proviso, proviso that, you know, we're just gonna keep looking at this, you know, every month or two um, very closely. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Any other comments or questions? Yes, Reese, this is Dave. Okay, Dave. Um, I have a question for, for Jody about a related issue. This is obviously a work in progress. The commission has the authority to amend the budget anytime it wants to. <laughs> what about transfers from one light item to another within a division and transfers between divisions? Who is authorized to do such transfers below the commission level, as it were? Uh, that would be me. Okay, both within the division and between, right? Um, between the divisions, um, there would have to be a little more uh, conversation because you ha would have to let the division head know that you were moving money that they had, uh, whether it was coming in or going out. So um, I would still, still do- you. It would still be you or would it be Anne? Uh, I think Anne would need to be asked. Um, right. The only reason that we would need to do that between divisions is if we ran out somewhere. Yeah, yep. that would okay. be a conversation. Right. Yep. Okay, any other questions? I have a question now. Jody, do you want, since approvals needed, do you want each one of these singularly approved or would you just want the whole thing? Well, the result, um, the, I'm trying to, what is the word? Craft motion. Oh, motion is, is crafted to accept the entire budget okay. as presented, but that didn't leave room to decide what you would want to do with the remaining 1.3. Okay, so shall we work on the whole thing and then take the 1.3 separate? Okay, so this, okay, any, any other comments? Are there any public comments? May I make a comment? Yes, Sandy. Sorry, I didn't see you. No, that's okay. Um, I wanted to echo a couple of the things that, that Barbara said, particularly in response to the public comments we had at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, I think those of you who have heard me speak on this before know that uh, I believe that as commissioners, our single most important function is fiduciary responsibility. It's up to us to assure the long-term health, success, and financial viability of the library. Um, I wanna thank uh, Anne and uh, Jody for making a very uh, impassioned plea to the commission on behalf of the staff. And normally I would, uh, I would not be in favor of using unallocated fund balances to pay for current expenses. In this case, uh, I think that what's being proposed here is, is sound from a fiscal perspective. It, it allows us to uh, protect the current staff, which uh, as Anne has indicated is a, is a top priority. And given the fact that we're shoring up the stabilization fund and the OPEB fund, I feel like we're doing it in a, in a prudent way. So uh, I want to, Jody, I want to thank you for putting this together. I want to express my strong support for what you've done. I am going to suggest that with regard to the 1.3 million in unallocated fund balance, that we table that tonight because I think that the two, the two proposals that were presented 
apart from doing nothing, both deserve additional consideration. And I'm not sure that we're going to have time to look at them in detail. So my, my request would be to bring that back to the staff for a little more preparation for the commission, but to approve the budget as otherwise indicated. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, I prepared to uh, make the uh, appropriate motion to approve everything except the 1.3. I would like, I agree with Andy. I think this is a fiscally sound budget. It's not what all of us might want, obviously. Um, and I, uh, I would also like to see more work on the unassigned fund balance. I'm not really sure we need a sinking fund for equipment replacement. Um, anyway, so if, you, if a motion is in order, I'd be happy to, to make the motion. So let me get this clear. We're making a motion to pass the budget with the exception at this point in time of those that last 1.3 million. We're going to um, that's that. Right. We're going I to think it should be phrased the amended budget. There are two parts that approve the amended budget with the three uh, bullet points beyond that and approve the amended use of the unassigned fund balance by assigning 1.684505 million to the stabilization fund. I think that's what we're talking about saying for exact language. That's my motion. Thank you. I'll second that motion. I do have a comment. I think it's very important that we get a replacement fund established because we're not fiscally sound and really acting appropriately if we have to go to current income all the time to replace computers after three or four years and so forth. Um, my reservation about saying, let's go ahead with it tonight, is we really need to have a, a study that says what the uh, future, where, how far behind we are on creating that because uh, we did an inventory, I think a year, year and a half ago. So we now have something we can build upon, but we need to actually say how many years will it be before this and that and the other thing. So we can plan from year to year to put the right amount of money aside for the future. That, thank you. That's all I have to say. This is Barbara. Could I uh, follow up with Tom on Tom's comment? Sure. Um, the we're now calling it um, this, what are we calling it now? The replacement fund. Uh, just to note, note that when the finance committee made the changes to the uh, fund balance policy, we included something called, I believe, capital accounts. And it was just to the same point. How long does it take to, uh, we need a replacement truck in 10 years, let's put a 10th of, of that away per year. So that's part of the policy, but I don't think it's ever been funded. And I think we asked about that a, a few months ago. So I, I agree that we need that. It's, it's obviously very bad uh, lack of planning to just have to take, you know, something comes along and try to take that out of a current, any current year's budget. So I'm fully in support of that. And I, I support also this, um, let's, let's look at the title of this and see, make it sure it fits with our current policy and then secondly, to have some specifics on exactly what these items are and uh, exactly what these funds are and how much we need to put in them on, a, on, a, on an annual basis. Thank you. Okay, so we're approving the budget as presented and leaving the remaining 1.3 million unassigned at this point in time. Is that correct? Yes. Reese, I think we're, I think the, what we're doing is summed up in the first four bullets on page 98. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're approving the revised budget by rolling over the 1.78 in unspent revenue. We're approving a one time use of unassigned fund balance of approximately 900,000. We're assigning 1.68 million from unallocated fund balance to the stabilization fund. And we're assigning 1.5 million from unallocated fund balance to the OPEB. And at this point in time, we're leaving the 1.3 unassigned. 
Right, but yeah. we are, I think. Uh, I, and I, well, we can I, revisit it. I mean, we can revisit any part of this thing. And, yeah. But, okay, so at this point in time, so can I have a motion to affect, to that effect, addressing all those issues, including leaving the 1.3 unassigned? That was my motion. That, yeah. That was my motion. That's what Tom seconded. Okay, so we got it. Okay, so. <clears throat> All those in favor? We'll they start with take the roll call, don't roll you? Call. I know. That's what I'm getting at. I have my little sheet here. <laughs> you just never know. That's what I keep doing. That's why you guys all come that way. Okay. So, David Cahill. Yes. Uh, Vince. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Andy. Yes. Paul. Yes. Tom. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Randall. Yes. Karen. Yes. Joel. Yes. And I make it unanimous. So the line budget was accepted as proposed. Okay, with the 1.3 million remaining in unassigned. Okay. okay. I, I would like one question before we move on. Okay. What's Randall? the status? of the audit from the physical year 1819. Um, as you know, all of the documents have been uh, uploaded. Um, Helen, who is my contact at Pacinium Brinker was on vacation uh, last week. Um, he expected to get in touch after reviewing the documents early this week with some next steps. Okay. It's about time to start all over again for last year. It is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're moving on to elections of chair and vice chair. Okay. We had one person for chair who uh, submitted her bio. Um, would you like to make a comment, Deborah? Uh, not really. I I um I I would like to be the chair. I uh, have spent a lot of time working with and for libraries for a very long time, and uh, moved up to Sonoma. And I, almost the first thing that we did was uh, the first thing I did was get involved with um, with the Measure Y campaign. And um, so Sonoma County Library has been part of my life since I got here, and I. I would like to, I would like to make a difference. I would like to help make a difference, so. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion. All righty, Tom. I'd like to move that we elect uh, Deborah as the chair for next year. I'll, I'll second. second. I'll second. So Paul seconded and uh, Tom moved. So we will go down our list again. I'm gonna go from bottom to top. Joel. Yes. Okay, Karen. Yes. Randall. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Tom. Yes. Paul. Yes. Andy. Yes, with enthusiasm. All righty, Deborah. Yes. Oh, uh, Vince. Yes. And David. Yes. Okay, and I make it unanimous. All right, so welcome to the position of chair. Thank you, madam. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I feel certain I will. All righty. Uh, okay, so now we have vice chair and the person who um, submitted a, a bio was Tom Hauser. And do you have any comments or words to say? It really isn't a bio. It's a it's a it's a feeling about where we need to go. Okay. And I think it states my position. All right. Want to know about what I've been doing for the last forty five years? I could, we if you have an hour or so, we can talk about it. But I think we should just move on. All righty. Well, then let's move on. So, do I hear a motion? Yeah. I, I so move. Oh. Okay, Paul, and a second. Okay. I'll second. I was going okay. to move it, so I'll second it. All righty. Okay, so Paul moved and McKinsey seconded. Okay, so all those in favor, 
David. Yes. Uh, Vince. Yes. Deborah. With enthusiasm. <laughs> All righty, Andy. Yes, definitely. Okay, Paul. Yes. Tom. Yes. Barbara. Yes, with added enthusiasm. <laughs> Randall. Yes. Okay, Karen. Yes. Joel. Yes. Okay, and I make it unanimous. So we now have a vice chair. So, all right, welcome to the stage. Have fun. <laughs> Let me just say how nice it is to see a smoothly well oiled political machine. <laughs> That would be us. Yeah. Okay. No, we're not doing too bad, actually. For as much as we've had to discuss, we're only at 820. Okay. Now, to adopt the resolution establishing appropriation limits for fiscal years 1819 and 1920. Um, I guess Jody Frost, not Foster, Frost. Okay. Any. Uh, do you want to say anything about this, Jody? I do. It needs to be pulled. Right. Um, thanks. Needs to be pulled? To, yes. Okay. Um, Next time. Thanks Bye. to uh, Andy. Um, I realized I used one of the numbers uh, was incorrect. Okay. There's two calculations that you work out, and one is based on per capita income, and the other is population. I was not using the correct population number. Oh, so it's, it's easily fixed and we can do it next month. Okay. okay. So we'll move that one forward. We'll move the appropriations limits forward till next month. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Okay. So where are we? Wait a minute. I'm on my second sheet. Library Stabilization Fund Act. Okay. Yes, now we're down to discussions. Okay, um, Deborah, I'll let you take this one since it's going to be involved with the advocacy committee. Great, thanks. Um, and it, 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 it's not actually the chapter letters for the Library Stabilization Fund Act. Um, this, this came up last, there's, there's not a whole lot of detail for you because it came up um, on Thursday and Friday of last, uh, last week um, at the national level and at the state level um, in terms of, um, so two, a, a senator and a congressman in Congress <laughs> um, submitted, uh, submitted a, a bill that wants to um, establish a $2 billion, that's B, billion dollar fund to address financial losses and bolster library services. And they just got the bill number at about 4:55 on Thursday, and we got the go-ahead to talk about um, to talk about moving forward with encouraging people to talk to their legislators and and approve it. And so, um, just as Jane was putting out the agenda, um, I said, "Is there any way that we can get this on the get this on the agenda?" And she said, "Well, we can try." And then it and then it occurred to me that if I if I brought it to you, the commission then we, the commission, could direct the advocacy committee to actually um, submit the letter, send the letter out, which is what your advocacy, the advocacy committee here has done um, for a number of years. And so, and the advocacy committee meets tomorrow. Um, so what I'm asking you is, um, this, is a, this is a bill, I think that, um, that it really is going to need a lot of people out in the community to uh, to to get the legislators to support it. Usually, our our legislators are very supportive. I have to say, so it's not it's 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 not going to be as hard for us here in California. But it's still really important that we let them know that we're supporting uh, something like this. And um, and the vote is going to be before they leave for um, for well, they actually aren't in Washington, but they're still working. So until they actually take um, take their vacation and their official vacation. So that's in about, I think a week and a half. Um, and um, and that, it, that 
two billion will um, will be distributed to through local to local libraries through the state um, through the state libraries as those kind of funds usually are, um, and it will it will have a lot of grants. It'll have a lot of um, a lot of data collection um, dollars so that we can see what this what this emergency is really doing for libraries across the country. So. Um, what I would like from this group, or what I suggest that this group do, is um, is have the discussion, but um, but ask the advocate, but approve sort of in in theory and in in, uh, in in your mind, and um, and direct it to the advocacy committee, so we tomorrow can uh, send a letter to both representatives and our both senators and our representative. Um, uh, to 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 ask them to approve this. Okay, so what you want from us is: Are there any questions or any discussion, any public comments right. or anything? And then we'll give you direction to do the letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I need. Okay, any thoughts or comments about? Um... Thumbs up. This is Tom Hauser. Let's yes. just go ahead and do it and get the, the committee to, to send the letter. The thumbs up, okay. Thumbs up. So everybody thumbs up. Consensus. Yeah. Consensus, okay. Yeah. Looks like it's all there. Okay, we'll move forward then. So you have direction from the commission to write the letter. Oh, we don't need to vote? Nope, we gave you the consensus. Yeah, vote. Fabulous. We can't okay. really vote. Right. All we can do is That's give you right. directions and That's right. agree together. Fabulous, so. thank you. Okay. May I ask Deb a quick uh, follow-up question? The, when sure. we did the advocacy for the state budget, was that effective? What happened with the state budget? It was not effective. It was not effective. <laughs> it was not effective. No, they said, yeah, that's nice, but no, we're not doing that. Um, uh, yeah. And and also, um, I appreciate the, the direction, but I would encourage all of you, Jane will send you something and I encourage all of you as individuals and anybody who's listening to this call to pick up the telephone, to send an email. You can go to the ALA website. They, they, will, they, will, they will practically send you the email, send the email to the, to the, the electeds, but this is important. So, um, so we will send information out, but, but as individuals, we, we have to do something. It's not just the letter from the commission. Okay. Okay, so um, now it's time to go into a closed session uh, to discuss uh, the labor negotiations. And um, so Jane, will you work your magic or whoever's supposed to be working uh, around? No, I did want to say something. Did uh, oh. Deborah and Ray, did you want to say something about the commissioners leaving? Not until later. Oh, okay. Later. Okay, yeah. So Ronald, Ronald will send you to closed session. Okay. Thank you. Will we know when we're there? I think so. It may take a, a couple of minutes. Hold on to okay. your seat. Just like being beamed up. Uh, yeah, that's, right. that's it. <laughs> Beam me up. Totally confused, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you all. Actually, this meeting's gone rather smoothly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Andy. We persevere. It was nice to be $3 million better off than this month than we were last month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate everybody's work to make all these presentations and facilitate all the discussions. Hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
the stage. I think they're all there. Looks like it. No. No, good. All right, good job, Ronald.
Chloe aku. Ini.
Are we done? Should I close the room, Reese? Yeah, we're closed. Okay. We're out of the closed session. Or at least I think everybody's going to be out. I'll, I'll, I don't, I'll close. But we're not I'll, done with our meeting yet. Right, gotcha. I'll close the room. Okay. And everybody will come back. Okay. Okay. Are we all back? No. Another, another few seconds. Okay, let's see. About 20 seconds, Reese. Okay. You'll tell me when we're ready. Five seconds, three seconds. <laughs> and I think everybody's back. Okie dokie. Okay, so we're reconvening the open session and no reportable action was taken in the closed session. So um, before we move on though, um, I wanna take a minute. There are two people who are one has left the commission and one is leaving the commission, Randall Neff and Steven Zolman. And I would like to thank them for the time, the years, the effort that they have put in to serving on the commission and to their commitment to their communities in bringing the library to their communities. Um, uh, the work Steven did in the underserved communities the work that Randall has done with the um, finance committee, I just totally appreciate it. And we will be sending you a copy of these plaques you now see on your screen, um, just as a small way of saying thank you and hope you remember us with kind hearts because we certainly will be remembering you with kind hearts. So thank you very much, Stephen, and thank you very much, Randall. Thank you, um, Randall. I have enjoyed working with you. So I know before we never gave recognition to anybody who was leaving. Tim May was a commissioner for a while, a uh, couple of terms. Um, Helena Whistler, same thing. Uh, and we just never did that. So we're starting to do that now. And, and I hope it will become a permanent part of uh, saying goodbye. So thank you, Randall. Thank you, Stephen. I think this is wonderful. I'm so glad we're recognizing service because as anybody who's watching might know, these are totally volunteer uncompensated positions. They take a lot of time and it's, it's all about dedication to public service and loving the library. Um, since Stephen has already left us, hello Stephen if you're watching and thank you. And to, to Randall, I appreciate not only all your service on the commission and the, and the uh, six years on the finance committee, if I recall, but also all the work that you've done with the Friends. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you've been a very active member of the Friends. You came to the commission via the Friends. And I know that how much you do to support Windsor, Friends of the Library and the library in general. So thank you so much. It's been a great to work with you, Randall. Okay. So with that done, thank you people. And any agenda items for future commission meetings? Yeah, I have one, Reese. Um, I, I, we're doing more on YouTube than I knew we were doing. Um, I see just on this, my screen here that we're live on YouTube and I saw that we're, I think switching programming. I think I saw an Anne's report or somebody's report. I, I'd love to have a, a, just a fuller report on how, how we are you, using YouTube. That would be helpful to me. Okay. And also just a small question. Um, we have a policy on uh, distributing agendas and we were used to those of us who are still liking paper ones so we can write our questions and stuff on the paper. We haven't been able to have those since March. And uh, if people are back in headquarters, if we can start getting those mailed to us again, that would be much appreciated. So. I don't think at this point in time that Jane mm -hmm. is back in headquarters yet, but I don't know for sure, She's but not. we'll check it out. Yeah, okay. Okay. we'll work something out. Okay. That would be great. Because I, I just can't print it all in my little funky 20-year-old printer and 267 pages. You can't print that. 
good. <laughs> Especially when they eliminate it, 200 pages of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, are there any other items that you'd like to go on the agenda for next time or sometime in the future? Okay. Um, I have a question about how we're going to handle reviewing the budget um, that we just adopted. Is it going to be a standing item on the agenda? Or should we, or could Jody put something on whenever she feels like it? I don't know how the system is supposed to work. I think that's probably something for Anne, Jody, and um, Deborah and Tom to discuss and figure out how best to do that. But yes, Great. I mean, if, if it's going to be a repetitive thing, you know, it does need to go on in huh? some place. Discussion, if nothing else, I don't know. So, but they'll have to discuss it and figure it out. Yeah. Okay. This is Tom Hauser. I'd like to have an item about the possibility of reallocating resources to more technology that is usable by a, the population with the uh, everything closed down the way we are right now. And maybe we just need to reimagine at least over a year or two year period of time, what a library should be doing. I'd like some kind of information on that to start that topic being discussed and considered. Okay. I'm writing it down. Can I tag on to that just a tiny bit, which is um, the same people that have had our Chromebooks and Wi Fi hotspots have had them since March. And now that people can return things, uh, I'm wanting those to be returned so they can be redistributed. I think I've mentioned this a couple of times. And I know that Vicki has indicated that they can actually be turned off. So they're no, you know, they can't be used anymore. But how do we get them back into the library and back out recirculating again? Mm -hmm. So a, a follow up report on that would be helpful to me. Okay, thank you. I was thinking about that too, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even okay. though we eventually have to get back that French pastry book I'm enjoying so much. <laughs> yeah, and how do they recur? I know the studies were done on books and typical things, but also you have things like the um, DIY kit. How are those being handled? I mean, I'm that's just an odd question I have. Did mm -hmm. you have 30 or 40 of them out? I can't remember what. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other items for future agenda? Okay, so I don't hear anything. So the next meeting is Monday, August 3rd, which is about two weeks from today, or maybe three, two three weeks. Three. It's three. Anyway, so I am now adjourning the meeting in honor of Bruce Robinson and his service to the library over the 20 some odd years that he was part of it. And thank you, Bruce. So you, Bruce. meeting is adjourned. And thank you, Reese, again. <laughs> Thank, thank you, you again. And Reese. Randall, thank you. And it was three and a half hours. I'm sorry, you guys. It was so long, but yeah. it was a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's Reese. all right. We'll give we'll forgive you since it's your last meeting. So <laughs> we'll make you do something. And we what? need to wish Paul a happy birthday because Wednesday, Wednesday is his birthday. Oh, oh, oh happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Well, it's I can collect social security now. So Woo. dang. That's that's a, it's you're, that you're, birthday. You're in. You're set for life. Okay. I, yeah, I'm in. I'm just I'm an old man now. <laughs> Enjoy it. Get your seasoned. 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 Yeah. Seasoned. Okay, I like I that. The older the fiddle. The sweeter the sound. Right. <laughs> uh, 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 true. Okay. You Bye, everybody. Get it all together. Bye. Night. Bye. Bye. Thank Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. We made it. Oh. Bye, Jane. Bye-bye. Take care. You too.